What's YouTube? It's that time again. It's a convention recap time. I am Bloodspawn80, and I am back from Monster Mania 25 in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I was there all three days. Still got the wristband as a VIP for Carrie Fisher. Um, so this is the booklet that they gave out, which I always grab one for my little binder. Uh, it's got all everybody, all the guests that are attending, all the schedule of the movies that are playing and Q&As and pretty much like what's going on all day. And then they put a little advertisement in the back for the next show, which is in Hunt Valley, Maryland. I will not be attending this. I wish I was, um, just based on who they have right there. Batman people, David Prowse, Heather Langenkamp, R.A. Mihailhoff, Lou Ferrigno, and there's still probably at least 20-some people that got to be added, so... There's what it looked like right there. Um, so when we got there, I got there a little early, and I could also get in an hour. Um, so the show opens at 5. I could get in at 4 with the VIP, so I could kind of get like a pre-scoop. So I kind of walked around and uh, tried to get a feel for where everyone was at and how much people were charging and stuff like that. Um, and before we get to any of the actual stories and stuff like that um the overall for this convention was um good usually i say monster mania awesome 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 but there was a lot of negative stuff about this one um price was a huge deal this time um usually 20 to 30 dollars gets you just about damn near anyone uh, i think the only time i've ever paid more than that might have been robert england was 35 and that's probably about it. Um, I knew Carrie Fisher was going to be 60, um, and I had the VIP for her, so I wasn't worried about that one. I knew uh, Christopher Lloyd, Malcolm McDowell, uh, that was pretty about it. I was probably thinking it'd be around 40. Uh, this time, almost everyone was 40, except for very, maybe three, four, five, six people, something like that. So even the low guys, I don't want to say nobodies, but, you know, eh been in a couple things we're charging 40 um, everyone was pretty much you know, they were charging 30 for an autograph and if you want an autograph and a photo they were 40 that's pretty much how everyone was doing it so because of photo ops the professional photo ops I believe uh, this it's spread to this convention now and now it's just gonna be just like comic-con and things like that from now on um, so we'll have to deal with that or not deal with that in the future if you know what I mean um, so enough, that's all the hate I'm going uh, to talk about uh, as far as show-wise. I'm still very, very happy with uh, the overall. Uh, a lot of the people that I did get to meet were really awesome. It was just a few bad apples, um, and I'll tell those stories. Okay, so uh, before we start meeting people, so I, I come back from the pre-scoop. I kind of got my game plan uh, because of the VIP. I was going to hit her first. Then I was going to try to knock out George Romero, Christopher Lloyd, and Malcolm McDowell the first day. I figured because of lines, I ain't going to be able to get as many people as I usually do, but we'll get into that. But before I could do any of that, here comes somebody, and they're like, Dave? And I'm like... Keith, and then he's like, yeah, dude, what's up, and I got to meet uh, Mr. Keith5775, that's his YouTube name, go check him out, me and him have uh, gotten to know each other uh, pretty quickly, busted out, I don't know how many trades we've done, two, three, something like that, um, and he's like, I got some stuff for you, and uh, he told me he was going to do it, and I told him, I was like, what, it's not a big deal, I just, uh, we did a trade, and he sent me one of the DVDs that I needed, um, and he sent it to me, but it was uh, without the book, uh, or not the book, the DVD cover, and obviously I sent out DVD covers to get signed, so I was like, yeah, that was probably actually more important than the movie was, uh, but it wasn't a big deal, but I did ask him just in case, like, do you happen to have it? He said he looked for it, and if not, he would buy it. I wasn't holding him to it, but there's a Blu-ray of Jonah Hex. And I did not, the trade was not for Blu-ray, it was for a regular one. Um, and he picked it up brand new, still in the packaging. He also has got a, uh, he forgot it to bring the, to the convention, but he's got a um, World War Z poster for me. Uh, so that was pretty cool. We hung out, uh, every time we talked, we like pass each other, we, uh, we'd stop and talk. What's going on? What you got? Okay, who'd you run into? Stuff like that. Uh, so we hung out quite a bit, and then we hung out on Sunday uh, at the Yorkie auction and watched that fold down. So, uh 
Uh, really, really cool to meet him. Uh, hopefully, I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing each other at most every Monster Mania we go to, and uh, we'll be having more trades and stuff in the meanwhile. I uh, did meet a few other people, uh, some from Facebook and some others from YouTube, which we'll get to later. I want to jump into what you guys are watching. Okay, so, uh, Carrie Fisher. Um, if if you see me looking down and stuff, I do have like a scripted out like who I met and what I'm going to be showing because i got to uh, stick all these pictures in here in the middle of me talking and stuff. So hopefully it works out uh, great when I'm, when I'm done editing. Uh, so Carrie Fisher, I had the VIP package, uh, standing in, uh, you know, they kind of huddle us all the VIP guys together and then boom, we go right up there and we, we get in, you know, like a kind of a line, uh, and then they start telling us the rules. Um, so right off the bat, I, I already knew there was going to be no pictures because she was doing photo op only. And I got that for free, uh, where you had to pay 70 if you weren't VIP for just the photo with her. So. I knew that was a thing, so I was like, I'm going to just put it on camcord and record it and show it to you guys, and I'll have that memory recorded. No cameras allowed, no nothing, no photography, you can take a picture of her, sign in the item, nothing, you couldn't even have your cameras out, and if they catch you taking a picture or recording or your camera's on, you'd probably either be kicked out of the whole show or at least be kicked out of being able to meet Carrie Fisher. So I quickly put my camera in the book bag. Um, so that was kind of sucky. So then they, boom, they file us in. And I'm thinking, you know, like there's got to be like 50 people in the room already. And I'm like 20th in my line. And it wasn't. It was, boom, we were the first ones in there. And I mean, I'm standing in the room. Here she is. And I'm like 10, 15, 20 people away from her. I was like, oh, crap, this is going to go really quick. Um, so I'm standing in line. And I'm like busting out my posters. And I got three posters for a sign. The lady comes over and she's like, oh, do you need help? You know, we can help you. And I'm like, oh, no, I got it. I don't like people touching my posters. Um, and so I just happened to say, let me ask you a quick question. Uh, is she signing up quotes? Do you know if she, oh, no, no, no quotes. I, I was pretty upset. But I said, you know, I got to get it. Um, so I got the three posters all signed. Um, so here is, and for each one of these, I'm, I'm only going to say it now, but each one I'm going to show the, like entire poster and then like a zoomed in picture of the autograph um, so here is the Star Wars poster and then this is the Empire Strikes Back poster and then we have the Return of the Jedi poster All right, so after we meet her, she was nice. Um, she asked, it was funny, I was wearing my Bloodspawn 80 uh, shirt uh, that uh, Mr. Uh, Ty did for me. Uh, and she was like, what's Bloodspawn? And I like, I said, that's my uh, YouTube name. I said, I make YouTube videos and, and uh, you know, about, I get autographs in through the mail and doing, you know, these and I do recaps and stuff. She's like, oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. She introduced herself to my son and stuff. She, she was pretty decent meeting. Um there's more to that okay so after that we we leave and uh you had to come later it was uh this is at like i mean i within 30 minutes i was done and out of there so it was really awesome uh but you had to go back we had a specific time for the vip's photo ops were which was 8 45 so it was like three and a half hours later so fast forward to the photo ops so i can be done with carrie fisher uh we get in and and professional photo ops are literally like snap 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 it's okay next pose snap next pose snap like there's no hey Carrie Bob can we do it's snap 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 so it was but as I'm walking up to her she was like oh I remember you blood spawn she's like you from the videos and I was like oh that was pretty cool like four hours later you you she still remembered from the shirt it was me um, so here is the photo op photo Okay, so next up in the game plan was George Romero, but George Romero's line was insane. They were still actually going through VIPs and stuff, so I was like, I'm going to try to go knock out uh, uh, Christopher Lloyd. But I happened to go in the wrong room, and Malcolm McDowell was in there, and he had like hardly no line. So I knocked out, I want, you know, he, I'll get him right now, then we'll go bang out Christopher Lloyd. So uh, Malcolm McDowell, uh, pretty cool. Um, 
not so much talkative, but it's still a good experience. Uh, no, no faults for him. Um, so here is a picture with me and Malcolm McDowell. And this one is another bad one. This is the second time I've done this to him, but the picture for my son did not come out great at all. And uh, I didn't catch it, so I didn't get to take another one. So here's the picture of Malcolm McDowell, my son. And next up is the picture of my Rob Zombie's Halloween, followed by the picture of the zoomed-in autograph that he signed. Alright, so I'm done with Malcolm McDowell. I haul ass down to the big tent room, which is like the main autograph room. They basically host uh, like wedding receptions and stuff, and that's, that's how big it is. And the whole entire square outline is table after table after table, and there's probably 20 celebrities in there signing. Um, so I go to Christopher Lloyd, no line, like four people. I'm like, holy shit. So I'm like, hell yeah, I'm getting in here. So I get in line for him, and uh, I'm watching the people in front of me, and it's, hi, $60, pay the lady, boom, bye-bye, next, 60 goodbye. No pictures, no personal, no talking, no, just short, quick, that's it. So as he's doing the person literally in front of me, um, the agent or person that was sitting with him at that time, I, I kind of know. I see her all the time. And uh, so I said, let me ask you a question real quick. He's charging $60. She's like, yeah, I had him at 50 So I was like, okay, it's no big deal. Here's the quote that I want him to sign. Do you think I'll have a problem with this? Because I can, like, shorten it or change it up to enough for, like, Great Scott or something like that. Uh, he's not personalizing anything. Uh, and he's $60? Yeah. Deuces. Turned around and walked out. So I did not get Christopher Lloyd. And from what I hear, every person I know that did. Yeah. Next. So I banged out. Uh, started wanting to. I'm like, you know what? I got plenty of time now. <laughs> you know, I, mean, I got Carrie Fisher. I got Malcolm McDowell. I'm passing on George for today. And uh, I'm not getting Christopher Lloyd. So I, now I can focus on, uh, you know, smaller people or the other people that I really wanted. Um, so we'll go to uh, Jessica Clark, who plays Lilith on True Blood. Um, I actually got um, her to, uh, my son had a camera and he was recording, um, so I do have a video of meeting, sorry for the noise, my, my cameras aren't camcorder, they're really nice cameras, but they don't do camcorder too well. Um, so this is the video of me meeting Lilith, keep your eyes out open right when it starts, she kind of like looks over at him like you're recording and then has like this fake smile and then starts talking to me again. I didn't catch that, my son did, and he kind of got a little scared, so he stopped the recording right when I really like was getting into, like I asked her a perfect question, which I'll tell you about, but here is the video. Alright guys, for some reason this is another one that I have to do this way because of the Kodak thing. The other videos all seem to work fine with these two because I filmed these on my girlfriend's camera so that way I could do camcorder and camera but that didn't work out I did figure that out so everything else was done on my camera uh, so sorry for this hopefully these come out at least halfway so you can understand or see and hear but who knows if that will be true or not until I'm done so here you go this is Lilith <laughs>
Okay, so right there at the end, uh, you know, you could see we were still interacting, and I got my autograph, and I, I like to get business out of the way first, and then I get the interaction. Um, so what I what I'd asked her, kind of right there towards the end, was a lot of her scenes are only filmed with Bill, and uh, so you know, like, is there a way, like, on the set, like, are other people there, and you get to meet, like, kind of like the whole cast, you know, like you're the new, you know, the new person this season, so they take you around and you get to meet everybody because she did say she's she was a fan of the show before she even landed the role and everything, so. Um, she's a not too much on on set, um, but they do take you know like a lunch break, an hour or whatever, and then everyone who's filming that day is in that room. So she's meet she's met a lot of people. We uh, had a good conversation about Christian Bauer, which is my and Lilith or Jessica Clark's uh, favorite character from the uh, from True Blood. So really, really nice lady and and beautiful. Jesus, I I, I mean she's naked in the show covered in blood and stuff and but uh, I mean she's so attractive uh, to meet in person with clothes on <laughs> all right so uh, so here's the picture of me with her and a picture with my son and here is my true blood poster uh, and then followed by the autograph All right, so next up, I met Samantha Mathis. Uh, she was in The Punisher, American Psycho. Uh, she was Princess Daisy in the old Super Mario. Um, she, she was really nice. Um, didn't really t uh, conversate with her uh, too much. We did talk a little bit about um, American Psycho and Punisher because I had the Blood Spawn shirt on and the Punisher logo. Um, so here is a picture of me with her. And a picture with my son and her. And here is the Punisher auto. And the American Psycho poster. And then after that, um, she did ask me if I had uh, watched, I think it's called The Dome. It's a new new show that just started, um, and, and I did admit to her that I hadn't, um, but I had heard pretty good things about it, so I probably will get around to watching that. And she was like, yeah, you definitely got to. She's pretty happy of it. and So I, I might look into that. Next up, Claire Coffey from Grimm. I have not watched Grimm yet, but everyone I know says this this is a good show so I'm gonna I, I, I bought the uh, first season on eBay uh, for 10 bucks so I'm waiting for it to get here and I'm gonna bang that one out so I wanted to meet her so like if I get if I get it and I love the damn show I'm gonna be like damn it why didn't I get her so I had to meet her so here's a photo with me and her and my son and here's the Grim Auto, and she signed it and like started walking away to come take the picture, and I like like stopped her. Like, I, I just thought her autograph was really amazing. I was like, I'm an autograph collector, so that means a lot to me. Um, so here is the Grim poster. Okay, next up, <laughs> this is one of my favorites. Okay, and, and and you guys are gonna think the wrong reasons, but Ginger Lynn Allen, um, Devil's Rejects, and former adult star, adult film star, whatever you want to word that. Um, so I'm going to show the auto first. <laughs> so here's my Devil's Rejects poster and her auto. All right, and before we get into the photo, she did uh, also throw in a, like, numbered trading card, and it's got, like, all her Twitter, Twitter info and email and stuff on the back, so that was cool, and she actually asked me if it would be okay if she dug out one uh, for my son, and she picked out, you know, just a nice little headshot, and uh, I said, yeah, that's fine, she's like, is that appropriate, and I said, yeah, that's fine, so that, and then my son got to take the photo for me, no, he didn't, uh, my buddy, who I met, uh, was... Uh, taking the photo for me but he was having trouble figuring out my camera because it's a little fancy and uh, the funniest thing is like she posed and she's like I mean on you and she throws her leg up around your front and wraps it around you and you're like holding her leg up against you and your other arms around her and you're just up against her 
and I'm sitting here holding her, like, posing, and he's having, like, I'm, I don't know how long it was, but it seemed like forever, and, like, we're just sitting there looking at it, and she's laughing and stuff, and, uh, yeah, she sniffed my neck, like, literally got real close, I could feel her breath, and she was, didn't say, like, you smell good, that's a good clone, what are you wearing, just, and then nothing. And then I'm still looking for the thing, and then he gets the he gets the uh, photo off. She uh, uh, opted to take a second one with me, so I kept going. Uh, and then she kissed me on the cheek, told me I'm the greatest, gave me a big huge hug, held me for a couple extra seconds, uh, and it was an awesome experience. It was funny as I'm holding her, waiting for him to figure out my camera. I literally like I'm kind of glad that he's taken a little while to figure uh, my camera out, and she thought that was funny, so. Uh, it was a good, good experience. Uh, never been uh, kissed by a celebrity, so or a porn star for that matter. So, all right. So that's that one. Uh, next up is Megan Rath from Being Human. And if if I don't say this five more times throughout this video, shoot me. But the Being Human people were fucking amazing, amazing, all of them. And I know for when you see what I got done, you're going to think it's because of that, but it's not. I mean, just they're just amazing. I can only imagine what it's like on set. Um, so I got to um, uh, thinking, you know, I'm a fan of being human. My girl's a fan of being human. My son's a fan of it. And my girl couldn't make it because she's a nurse and they can't get off on weekends. You know, when it's their weekend to work, it's almost impossible. So she was not able to go with me. Um, so I took it upon myself that I was going to get, try to get um, videos for her from Lynn. So I approached her, and with her I didn't have, uh, I didn't hesitate, or I mean I pretty much just asked, like, yeah, hey, can you do that? I got uh, you know a favor for you. Can you do this for me? And uh, you know I explained that my my, my girl's a, a fan of the show, nurse, blah blah blah, can't make it, blah blah blah. But the, you know the the uh, Megan uh, who plays Sally, the ghost. Uh, that's my girl's favorite character. So I told her that and I said, can you make a video real short or something? Just, you know, hey, hey, Tanya, sorry you couldn't make it. Thanks for watching the show. And then, you know, whatever you want, just nice and short. She's like, oh, yeah, sure. So uh, the downfall of it, and I need your guys' help with this, uh, I can't do anything with the damn video. It says I don't have a codec, C-O-D-E-C. -E I've tried switching it to real player and Windows Media and QuickTime and all this shit, but it keeps giving me a problem. So if anybody can help me with that out, because I'm trying to piece all these together uh, and make a, like a one long thing with these. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to turn my webcam and show it to you on my computer. It's probably not going to look that good and sound that good, but hopefully you guys can get the idea. So give me a second. Okay. <laughs> all right so that was that video there at the end it was kind of it was really funny because uh like when she's like you know and this person says hi and this person says hi and then she like paused i thought she was that was done i mean it was long enough for me i was happy so when i started dropping the camera she started talking again like I'm shutting the recording off and she was actually going to keep making the video and we laughed for a little bit what you heard and then uh, she, I was like oh my god I'm like I, I thought you were done I mean that was great and she's like oh you know I'm a, I'm a talker I would have just kept rambling and rambling and I was like oh darn but you know I'm, I'm more than happy with that so really really awesome that like they would take their time I mean I paid for my autograph I got my autograph she was willing enough to take a picture with me uh, and my son separately and then did that video so Really, really awesome. Um, so here's the photo with me and her. And my son and her. And here is the Being Human poster and her autograph. Alright, so since I uh, hadn't gotten George Romero uh, and wasn't getting Christopher Lloyd, um, I decided that I'd use the Christopher Lloyd money to get 
the one that I, I was really kind of down on, like not being, I wasn't going to get him. He didn't, I didn't have nothing for him, no quotes, nothing, which, which was Danny Glover. Um, so I met Danny Glover, uh, and awesome, man. I mean, the dude's a legend and he was freaking awesome. We, uh, his brother was there who looks ridiculously like him. Um, so I come up and I always do like, you know, Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm David. This is little David, big David, little David, however I say it. Um, and, uh, he introduced himself, shook both our hands and everything. And then, you know, he was like, you know, one day he's going to be big David. And he points to my son, he's laughing. I'm laughing. My son's laughing. And he's like, let me tell you a story. And he's like, this is my brother over here. And I said, yeah, I thought that was your brother. He looks a lot like you. Uh, but he's like, uh, you know, we have a nephew and he, I don't know how many years younger he didn't say, um, but growing up, you know, the two brothers, the two Glover brothers, if you want to call them that, would like, you know, hit on them, punch them in the arm and stuff, the nephew they're talking about. Uh, and then he grew up to be way bigger than them, like six something or something like that. And, uh, the nephew literally goes to him and goes, you, you know, y'all can't hit on me anymore. And he's cracking up. The brother's cracking up. Me and my son are laughing. Other people who heard the story were laughing. It was it was so fucking awesome, man. Danny Glover, thumbs up, dude. Um, so here's a picture. Um, for time's sake, and um, just because I thought it would be cool, would be uh, we took a photo together with him. Uh, we weren't told we had to. Uh, I didn't ask. For, uh, I just felt like this would be a good one to get both of us in. So here's the photo with Danny Glover, me, and my son. And because I didn't take anything, I had to pick an 8x10, which kind of worked out because I was kind of looking at, uh, I wanted Lethal Weapon. Um, I could go Saul and probably get some people there, um, but Lethal Weapon was what I wanted him on, and I was like, who else am I going to get this on? I'm not, you know, there's not many other people I can get. So uh, I picked out an 8x10 with him and Mel Gibson, which I just liked. I liked the black and white effect to it. Uh, I did not tell him what the sign he wrote it out to me without asking what my name was again um, and wrote the quote that I probably would have picked anyway. So here's the photo uh, that I picked out uh, and then the autograph. All right, so after that, that was pretty much it for autographs on Friday. VIP party was 1030 that night. As um, soon as we walked in, me and my son, we saw it all. Boom, George Romero taking pictures with fans and stuff. I mean, huddled around him, there was a circle around him. But he was one after another, posing, laughing, smiling, talking real, you know, pretty quickly. Um, but, you know, I think everyone kind of had that, you know, let me just say what I got to say real quick. Shake his hand, laugh a little, and then give somebody else the opportunity of getting a free picture with him. So I was like, I was like, come on, we gotta go, we got we gotta get over here. So we're like squeezing through people, and I, you know, I get my son to go line up um, to uh, you know be in position to take the picture when I when I say, hey George, can I get one? Um, and and he, I mean, I don't know how many people end up going through, but he took at least 15, 20 pictures before I got my opportunity. Um, so here is the picture of me and, and George Romero. And after we took that picture, um, I was pretty much done. I didn't want to hog him, but he was like, you know, do you want one with me and your son? And I was like, sure, man, and that that's really awesome. So we switched, and I took the photo. So here's the photo with my son and George Romero. And after that, I thanked him. I, I told him it's, it's a really honor uh, just seeing you let alone meeting and taking a picture and shaking your hand uh shook my son's hand and then as we're walking away i'm explaining to my son you know that if this dude was never born or you know went a different career path there might not be zombies there in i mean in the movies and stuff so and my son thought that was pretty cool like he didn't really know you know i told him he was the director of these movies but i didn't tell him that aspect of it so that was really cool. Uh, then there was uh, cake, you know, cake cutting, DJ gone, boom, 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 drinking, all the whole nine yards. Uh, so here's a picture of the actual George Romero cake. And then they brought him in and he cut the cake and I did get a, a couple, but I'm just going to show one. Here's a picture of George Romero cutting his own cake. They also had a clockwork orange cake and a cake cutting with Malcolm McDowell. Uh, I got a picture of the cake, so here that is. But I was on a 
bathroom slash get another mixed drink uh, in me when he actually came and cut the cake. My son was in the room, so he did get to see it and everything, but uh, did not take pictures. So I don't have anything for that. Uh, and that's the end of Friday. Uh, besides a lot of drinking and hanging out with a bunch of people, we were probably partying until 5 a.m. So uh, Saturday, crowded as hell, really, really crazy. Um, but I did get to meet uh, a new YouTuber uh, who's a fan, um, and uh, I told him I'd give him a shout out. Uh, his buddy was there, who's also on YouTube, but I did not write his name down, and they said it, but it, it's it's kind of a, a not so normal or regular one that I can remember. So I'm sorry for that, dude. But uh, Horror Fan 34 is his name on YouTube. So guys, look him up, and give him a sub. Uh, he does. Uh, movie reviews he goes to cons and does the same kind of video I'm making now so uh, check him out guys horror fan 34 thanks for hanging out man good time seeing you um, so the Whitwer line story Sam Whitwer uh, did not show up Sam Huntington did not show up the two other uh, the males on being human uh, until Saturday um, so his line was was crazy it was it was it was bad um, and the bad part was, since he didn't show up to Saturday, everyone who was getting them was getting them right now. Um, so it was really, really long, and then they had a Q&A at 2 o'clock, and I didn't get in the line until about 12, uh, 12.30 maybe, somewhere around there. Uh, and then they also had a photo shoot at like 4, or 2 to 3, no, 4.40. Um, so it was like, I got two hours to try to get him, then he's gone for an hour, then he's going to come back, and I got an hour and 40 minutes to try to get him. So we stood there in the first gap and did not get him. Uh, but luckily, they handed out these little stickers uh, with numbers on them, and you were allowed to go, do, you know, do what you want to do, go to the Q&A or whatever, and then come back, and they would sticker numerical order you right back in that line, and no one else was allowed to meet him before until the line that had the stickers got to go on so <clears throat> so I got that uh, was cool was when I was in that line uh, Dave Sheridan was heading for his photo op and uh, he played he was in Devil's Rejects uh, but he also played Doofy on Scary Movie uh, and he's literally in Doofy freaking costume and doing like I mean he's got the face going and he's he's talking like him well he comes up and he stops right in front of me uh, and there was a lady in a wheelchair in front of me, and her, I guess her husband or son or somebody was there uh, pushing her wheelchair. And he goes to do like the doofy, like weird high five to her, and she's sitting in her wheelchair, and she like literally like puts her hand up to to try to, you know, give him the high five, but he's holding it like up. He's standing up all the way, and he's still holding it up here, and like he keeps going like he's trying to, but she can't reach him. And he's in and, and the doofy voice. He's like, "You're gonna have to get out of the chair." And it was so funny and fucked up at the same time, but because it was him playing the role like that's something Doofy would have done he wouldn't have thought like that's an ignorant thing to say to somebody in the wheelchair but he's like you're gonna have to get up if you want to do high five it was fuck I laugh my ass off so uh, call me an asshole so I went to the uh, being human Q&A uh, uh, basically left the line because I have my sticker went to the being human Q&A and I'm not gonna talk about it because go to YouTube and look up Monster Mania being human Q&A or something. You have to freaking check this out if you like Q&As. It's the best q and I've ever been in. Non-stop laughs the entire freaking time. Um, so after their q and I went back to uh, uh, Sam Witwer, the vampire on being human. He's also in Dexter, The Walking Dead, uh, Stephen King's The Mist, uh, Star Wars Clone Wars. He's Darth Maul's voice. Just a ton of shit. Um, so here is a photo with me and him. Photo with my son and him. And here is my Being Human poster again with him on it. And I got right out of his line and went right next to him, which was Sam Huntington, plays the werewolf in Being Human. He was also the main character, or one of the main characters in Fanboys, and he's been in other stuff as well. Um, I did not try to do Sam Witwer, uh, the video thing like I got Megan Rath to do, uh, because his line was so damn long and I just knew the agent was going to give me shit. Sam probably would have done it, um, but I didn't want to risk pissing somebody off. So I went in Sam Huntington. He had no line like down the hall or nothing. It was just maybe 10, 15 people uh, in front of me. 
Um, so get up there to Sam, and right off the bat, I'm like, dude, I need you to make me out to be a hero. And he's like, uh, okay. I mean, after like we exchange, hey, Dave, big Dave, little Dave, hey, I'm Sam. Um, so I'm explaining to him, same scenario. She's not able to make it. She's a nurse, big fan, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, okay. Like, you know, trying to figure out where the hell am I going with this? Uh, so I told him the story and he's like, dude, sure. No problem at all. Um, so here is Sam Huntington's video to my girlfriend. Good. Hey, Tanya. I'm Sam. Wish you were here so we could meet and embrace. Uh, but I think, uh, yeah, I think our, our paths will cross at some point. Um, if, if, if fate is kind. I love you. Really? What is it about our show? All right. And I'm switch it up a little I'm gonna show the photo uh, with my son first and there's a reason why but this is a cool photo too so then boom my turn my turn for the photo um, and I go to take the photo my son's taking the uh, picture and I'm posing and all of a sudden I see the people that are around and in, in, in other lines aiming their cameras at me and Sam Huntington like why do people want a picture of me with Sam Huntington and when you see the picture you'll see my eyes are not at my son like they should be they're kinda like leaning this way like what the hell's going on over here and I saw Sam like you know one arm up and I thought he was throwing up a middle finger or something I had no clue because I, I couldn't see anything else but him um, so uh, long story short I got photo bombed here's the picture So that was really, really awesome, man, to get photo bombed by the damn Aiden, the vampire, in Being Human while I'm taking pictures with the werewolf from Being Human. So pretty cool. Uh, but the, here is the autograph uh, of Sam Huntington on my Being Human poster. All right, next up, and this is the, let me make sure, yep, this is the last autograph that I got. Uh, after seeing the Doofy thing, I had to go meet this guy, uh, Dave Sheridan. I did have my Devil's Rejects poster because I got Ginger Lynn to sign it, so I was like, I'm going to add him, and I planned on it anyway. Uh, so here's a picture of me and Dave Sheridan. And a picture with my son and him. And here is my Devil's Rejects poster and where he signed. All right, next up, we're walking around. We're seeing all kinds of people in costumes. And usually I do take several pictures with the people where my son does. But I, for some, I don't, really, I don't even know why, but we didn't this time around. But my son did see one uh, that's really special to me. He's one of my favorite uh, comic book people, and my son really likes him too. So here is... Deadpool versus Youngblood. All right, next up, Carrie Fisher's Q and A questions and answers. Uh, shorten this down, real simple and sweet. Uh, they, you weren't allowed to videotape it, which was weird because of copyright or some shit. I don't know. So no videotaping, and you're not allowed to take pictures during it until the end. He'll have her stand. We heard a lot of cool stuff from her, really, really funny. Um, there was kids there, so unfortunately they got to find out that the real Princess Leia was uh, a bit of a druggie. Yeah, there was a lot of drug stories, and I don't really know what it was like working with this person because I was high all the time. Things like that would come out, so it was really, I enjoyed it, but I'm sure there was people out there that were pissed that she was telling stories about like this, you know, uh, child iconic princess Leia um, so but uh, it was it was good I enjoyed myself a lot in that Q&A um, next up after that Q&A was another one so I took a break got a little bit more and drink a drink in uh, and then uh, George Romero's Q&A and I'm VIP so I got front row seat and I was uh, third row for Carrie Fisher's and I was second uh, for George Romero and I was in the middle so it was like right and for like two seats away from George Romero. Uh, his Q&A was really, really awesome. Um, I did get a couple pictures and a video, uh, but I, this Q&A, it was, I mean, just amazing to watch anyway, because it's fucking George Romero, but, like, he told some cool shit, like, 
I literally now know where George Romero was and what he was doing when it came across the news and the radio that Martin Luther King had been shot. He was with his business partner driving the script or the movie itself of, of Night of the Living Dead to the you know people to try to get them to pick a movie up or or or, or whatever uh, distribute it. Um, and then he also told an interesting thing you know, about. At the end of the movie, you know, when uh, when the main character uh, gets shot by the police by mistake because they thought he was a zombie, that a lot of people thought that that was a racist thing uh, because the main character being black um, and the fact that he was not a zombie and they shot and killed him, they shot and killed him because he was black, not because they thought he was a zombie. So it was a really interesting thing, especially during that time uh, in the six, you know, late sixties, early seventies, that that that's what they did and he's like it was never intended for that and it was kind of stupid because everyone knows like you know you get a, a paper script first there you know you, you ain't even picked out who's playing them uh and by name and, and by this guy's brain he never imagined the guy being black you know black or white there was no he we didn't know who the actor was and that that's the story he told i thought was really really cool uh here's a couple pictures of uh george romero um at the Q&A. Uh, and here's a video of him. This is at the end, at the end of the Q&A. Uh, Dave, who's the, uh, the guy in the second uh, picture, uh, the guy who runs the uh, Monster Mania and puts it all together. Uh, he asks them to stand and everyone's allowed to take pictures and stuff like that. And you can see him kind of, you know, trying to get, I'm looking over here, I'm looking here, I'm looking here. So everyone gets them kind of looking at him. So I snapped those two, uh, a couple photos. Uh, I'm not showing them, but I'm going to show the video. Uh, and then you see him say goodbye and walk off the stage. So cool video. Check it out. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please a big round of applause for George A. Romero. All right, so after that, that was pretty much it for tonight. I didn't do much else besides some drinking and partying with a bunch of freaking awesome people. Um, just to show you. This is the bottle I bought brand new before I left Delaware on Friday, and I believe someone had two mixed drinks out of this, and the rest would be all me, but it's a gallon, and, uh, you know, all the way up to here, and that's what's left of it, so I probably drank three quarters of a bottle by myself in two days, so, yeah, I was feeling pretty good. Uh, and then Sunday comes around, and uh, I'm starting to think Sunday's a, a good day to get some autographs because, I mean, no one had a line. Romero's was like 20, maybe 20 people. The Being Human only had four or five. It was, it, I was like, wow, this is, this is like a little gold mine here. Um, so I said, you know what? I got the ghost. I got the werewolf. I didn't get the vampire. So I went back to Sam Whitworth. And I kind of, you know, like dodged the agent when she was talking to the last people because she took the picture for the people that were in front of me. And she's like, you know, with them handing their camera back, I kind of snuck past her and was like, hey, Sam, you know, we met uh, last night. Uh, I was just wondering if you could do me a big favor. And then the agent's back, but I'm already talking. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm gold. So I told him, blah, blah, same story. My girl can make it, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, yeah, sure, man. This video is fucking hilarious, man. So here is the video of Sam Whitwer, who plays the vampire Aiden and being human uh, for my girlfriend. Yeah. All right, whenever you're ready. Hey, Tanya, sorry you couldn't be here. And I also want to apologize for anything that, that Sam Huntington said. You didn't mean it? He's just like that, believe it or not. I meant every word of it. 
he, he didn't I mean he doesn't know what he's saying. He doesn't even really know where he is. Look at him. He's like an animal with animal intelligence. He reacts and he does things, but he has there's nothing up here that's actually seeing and digesting. No, I mean things when I say them. I mean things when I say them. I just don't know what I'm saying. He doesn't I, I don't he, really know what I'm saying. He means it as much as, as he can say them. It's like does a squirrel know what it's doing when it's you know doing squirrel things? No. Thus is Sam Hunting. <laughs> Megan Rath is just a, uh, Dude. a horrible slut. <laughs> She's really very or kind. Maybe. Or maybe. But Mild. the truth of the matter is, she's a little bit promiscuous. You obviously think so. And she has incredible hearing. <laughs> Sonar hearing. She's a very angry, angry woman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry you couldn't have been here for yourself, but it's it's really for the best. <laughs> so that was really, really amazing. The interaction between all three of them in the video, that itself is just a cool freaking video, even if it wasn't made, you know, in the purposes that it was made for. I brought them home, showed them to my girlfriend. She's freaking ecstatic um, that I did that for her, and they were willing to do that for her. So... Uh, that was, I mean, just sold me on, on top of, I mean, you could just see the interaction uh, between them, uh, and it was just non-stop. It was uh, when I met Sam, uh, the vampire, Sam Whitworth, uh, when he came around to take a picture with me, he stopped because he was between uh, Sam Huntington's table, and he stopped and looked down, and he, like, back-slapped. Uh, a poster like a standee with the prices and everything he's knocked it onto the floor like just messing with the werewolf Sam Huntington so it was like I mean these guys are like, like best friends for life probably so uh, after that that was pretty much it besides a lot of walking around I did go to the Yorkie auction which is a auction that they do everyone donates stuff vendors celebrities sign shit uh, you know posters and stuff there's collectibles, just I mean it's awesome. All these people donate all this stuff to the Yorkie auction, uh, which is uh, a charity. It's called Save the Yorkie. They're a dog rescue for Yorkies, uh, and basically they take all the donations in and they auction it off to anyone who's sitting in the in the in the room, uh, and then all the proceeds go to the cost of getting these rescued dogs, hurt, injured dogs. Um, you know, medically taken uh, to a, a veterinarian and homed and fed and sheltered and all that stuff. So I, I always try to go to this because there's a lot of good bargains there. Um, so I did end up getting something there towards the end. Um, I had my son bidding for me. I thought maybe sympathy for the kid, but it kind of didn't work. But I got one. It was like uh, three or four T-shirts, some keychains, um, things like that. I, my, I got my... I got it mainly for the t-shirts for my son because he doesn't have like horror type stuff to wear to these cons. Uh, and then I, there was, they mentioned a necklace and stuff and I didn't really care. But when I saw this, it's what sold me on it and I really wanted it. This is a actual energy drink. Uh, and that's the Hellraiser box emblem and it says Cenobite on there. So this is a Cenobite energy drink for Hellraiser. So this is freaking awesome for my Hellraiser collection. So I'm sitting there and then I start going through the stuff. And it was like a pirate, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, like actual necklace medallion and stuff. And then there was this little jewelry box. I was like, oh, what's in here? And I popped it open and this is the necklace. And it's the, did the puzzle box for Hellraiser. Somebody, one of the vendors makes these and sells them in the vendor's room. But you can see the details. Every side's got the detail of the puzzle box on it. So really, really happy with that. My son was happy because he got the T-shirts, and I got two additions to my Hellraiser collection. Uh, and that was it, guys. That's uh, Monster Mania. A lot of good buys, a lot of good friends, a lot of new friends, and uh, just good times, man. Uh, conventions is where it's at. I'm not going to quit. Uh, I'm just hoping that photo ops fucking die uh, and uh, that, then the conventions can uh, get better. So that's my recap. Sorry it's so fucking long, but I mean, I mean, when you spend three days somewhere and you meet a bunch of people and, and uh, you want to tell as many stories as you can uh, for your benefit and to try to get you that watch that don't go to these to get to one, 
they're going to be long. So uh, until, I guess, March, you won't see one of these again. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, again, check out the Being Human Q&A video. I'm sure it'll be on YouTube in a couple days. And uh, try to watch some other people that do this. Uh, like my buddy HorrorFan34. Uh, Mr. Keith 5775. I'm sure he's got a recap video coming up soon. Uh, so see what he got and what he has to say about the convention. Alright guys, that's it from Bloodspawn. Peace.